Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, following violence in which hundreds were killed in Juba earlier this month, communities are having a tough time. They're facing food shortages, a possible cholera outbreak, an instability that's unlikely to be easily resolved. Also, the UN warns that around a quarter of a million kids are facing starvation in Borno State. Hundreds of people displaced by the Boko Haram insurgency have starved to death and the state-run aid agencies accused of coming up short. And Eastern DR Congo has a long history of instability. Various militia have used it as their stomping ground for decades, putting a lot of pressure on the different communities who call the region their home. But first, following violence in which hundreds were killed in Juba earlier this month, there are warnings of a possible cholera outbreak and rapidly dwindling food supplies. Meanwhile, the UN's mission in South Sudan is looking into reports that the country's soldiers raped civilians near a peacekeeping base in the capital, where around 30,000 people have crammed in, hoping to avoid the violence of over two years of civil war. Despite the instability, Juba is less than keen on the presence of foreign troops. The AU's decision on Monday to deploy extra soldiers is unlikely to go down well, as Simona Foltin tells us. The regional force proposed by the African Union is likely to be met with strong opposition here in Juba. The government sees the deployment of any outside force as an infringement on the country's sovereignty. Last week, President Salva Kiir said that not a single additional peacekeeper would be allowed on South Sudanese soil. The opposition, on the other hand, has said that first Vice President Riek Machar, who has been in hiding despite a ceasefire declared last week, will not return to Juba unless a regional force is deployed to ensure his safety. But such a force is contrary to what was agreed in a peace deal signed in August last year. That agreement stipulated that joint military and police units, composed of both government and opposition troops, should be responsible for security in the capital. Now that opposition forces have been driven out of Juba as part of the most recent fighting, the government has consolidated its military control. It will want to preserve the status quo and is unlikely to cede to any fresh demands by the international community. Simona Faltin for France 24 in Juba, South Sudan. And they call, there are calls continuing to grow for more news on the whereabouts of South Sudanese journalist Albert Taban, who disappeared, and his colleagues are concerned about his safety. We'll bring you more on that as we get it. Well, UNICEF's raised the alarm about a suspected quarter of a million kids who are at risk of starvation in northeastern Nigeria. The Children's Agency says that many kids in Borno are so badly nourished that they won't see survive unless they are treated. The state is the home of the Boko Haram insurgents who have wreaked havoc in the region and trade, livelihoods and access to medication have been undermined. State-run aid agency NEMA has been accused of mismanaging the crisis, as our correspondents found out. Taylors are hard at work in Dollary Camp. Suleiman found refuge here 18 months ago after Boko Haram insurgents attacked his village. He hopes that tailoring will earn him enough money to rebuild his home. But very few people have the means to buy his clothes. We had hoped that Ramadan would bring us more business. But people just can't afford it. So this year, we earned very little. Around 30,000 people live in this camp. It is the most populous in all of West Africa. The highlight of most people's lives is the distribution of food and clothes. Security is tight here because of repeated attacks by suicide bombers on camps in the region. Trauma is widespread because of the horrors people have experienced at the hands of the world's deadliest insurgent group. Many people prefer to cling on to the relative safety of the camp than to return home. We pray for peace and to be able to return to our home. Life here at the camp cannot be compared to our lives back home, no matter what we receive here. A humanitarian aid delivery is underway. 
The state-run aid agency, NEMA, is responsible for distributing food and clothes to IDPs in camps across the country. They have come under close scrutiny in recent weeks due to the death of 200 people at a camp about 70 kilometers from here in Bama. The camps here in Borno State are all overpopulated. Our military are liberating all villages and uh, towns outside the Maiduguri. And uh, daily they liberated people. So you can see planning. We have to replan and replan again. You can see the quantum of uh, large quantum of food that we are, we are packing. And this one it will only last for two or three months. IDPs wait in an uncertain limbo somewhere between liberty and captivity. The promises of President Mohamedou Buhari and the pledges of financial aid for reconstruction are not enough to convince these people to return home. At least 17 soldiers were killed in central Mali on Tuesday after gunmen attacked their camp. Fighters from an ethnic Pearl militia group have claimed responsibility for the raid in Nampala. There is some doubt, though, among security services about whether such a new setup could pull off such an attack. Some of its members have in the past denounced what they say have been false accusations that Pearl support jihadists in the area. Zimbabwe's president has hit out at the popular pastor behind the This Flag anti-government protests. Robert Mugabe said that followers of Evan Moarire spell God backwards and that he is not really a man of religion. Hundreds of Maori race supporters gathered outside a court in Harare last week until charges of treason against him were dismissed. He's currently in South Africa and says that his movement is a peaceful call for change and against corruption and police brutality. In a season where fear is being broken, we're scaling the wall of fear in a very big way in Zimbabwe. The goal of this campaign, of this flag campaign, was to raise more and more Zimbabweans to not be afraid anymore and to spread that message, allow it to catch on like a virus. Well, Eastern DR Congo has a long history of instability. Various militia have used it as their stomping ground for decades, putting a lot of pressure on the different communities calling the region their home. Well, recently, ethnic tensions have flared in North Kivu following a spate of killings that have stoked mistrust and animosity. For the last 16 years, the remote village of Bulu'uso was held by Hutu FDLR rebels, whose founders took part in the genocide in Rwanda. But at the end of last year, the rebels were chased out by local militias. As they left, they destroyed most of the houses. The Kobo community returned here first, followed by Hutu civilians. But the Kobo accused the Hutus of still harboring FDLR rebels. The FDLR raped women here. They burned down our houses, and the Hutus were up there, came into our fields to take our crops. Given everything that's happened here, we don't know whether we live in Rwanda or Congo now. UN peacekeepers have been sent here. Last month, they killed seven militiamen who tried to prevent aid workers giving out food to Hutu civilians. The governor of North Kivu has named a mediator to try and reconcile the two communities. They must forget the past and start living peacefully, side by side. The state should also try to comfort the people that were held as prisoners. For example, they could give them sheets of metal so they can rebuild their houses. The mediator knows he now faces an uphill struggle in this part of North Kivu where ethnic tensions run deep. While there have been big celebrations in Africa's second smallest nation in Sao Tome, supporters of Evaristo Carvalho have been celebrating his surprise first round win of Sunday's presidential vote. The ruling party candidate and former prime minister beat incumbent Manuel Pinto da Costa. The 78-year-old had been hoping to sit for a third term. Meanwhile, opposition party candidate and ex-premier Maria das Neves has challenged the vote. That's where we're going to leave it for Eye on Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us and please do so again if you can. Take care.